On this week's episode of Circles Off, we're going to talk a little bit about gambling Twitter. I know we've done some of this stuff before, the false experts that are out there, the people that mislead the population. But what really bothers me the most is the toxicity that exists in gambling Twitter nowadays. I'll talk about why, all that and more. This week's Circles Off starts now. Come on, let's go! Welcome to Circles Off, episode number 105, right here on the Hammer Betting Network. Rob Pizzola, joined by Johnny from Betstamp. How's it going? Robbie Pizzola, fresh off his feature in a national news network. Yeah, second one I've had, actually, in the last couple of years. Listen, I mean, now that now that uh, in Ontario we've had regulated sports gambling, you know, there's some topics of conversation, particularly around responsible gaming. Uh, I have some experience with, with that, which I've talked about on this program before. So uh, it was a pretty natural fit. Take everyone behind the scenes. I found this cool. So they actually came to your house, interviewed you in the backyard. So this stems from like right at the beginning of COVID. Um, they wanted to do a piece of on upcoming regulation in Canada or in Ontario specifically. Um, so yeah, they, they came to my house and because the first time around, they couldn't like technically couldn't come inside. It was actually, I think CBC like restrictions in terms of filming, we had to film outside. So we just filmed it in my backyard. So um, fast forward to about a month ago now, I remember uh, Carolina and New Jersey were playing in the playoffs, like game two of that series. And, um, you know, they reached out. We're doing another piece on problem gaming and also like betting content in the space. And uh, the ask was to do a one-on-one interview with me and also to film me and a group of friends watching a sports game to see how like what what the experience is like with live betting and and i'm sure that that you didn't change your behaviors based on the fact that there was 17 cameras in your face we definitely did not zach was there zach was part of it producer zach uh behind the glass who does have his voice back this week um but they got it they came and i just figured they were going to interview me inside and they're like you know what like the backyard is really nice a good filming spot so let's film it out there again and it's a little cold that day so to put a put on a jacket and we filmed it it was good it's you know i've worked in media so i know how it works but like you know a one hour interview gets condensed into like 40 seconds so like we'll how, get how long was the feature the feature was eight and a half minutes eight and a half we'll link in the description if anyone wants to see that feature uh was a good was a good piece of betting content. Yeah, that was um, you know I guess did they do think they did a fair job? I think they did. It was it, it's um, it's tough, you know. This is a nationally run segment in Canada, right? On the state of sports betting, and it was you have to repre- you have to get representation from all sides. So my opinion is that I believe that the ACGO, iGaming Ontario, I think that they have the the best interests of betters at heart, but maybe they're lacking some experience in the sports betting space. And like a lot of the the rules that they're putting in to protect betters don't honestly make a whole lot of sense. You know, like having to click a checkbox when you log into an account saying that you're like of legal age and you're of, you know, no, actually sound- it's, it's, it's supposed to say, so the law is it has to say I am eligible and fit to play. And then you click it. And then the reason right. that they said that is because they're like, well, if someone's like drinking too much, shouldn't be betting. So if you're hammered, you log into your app. Like, <laughs> well, confirm. like no, I'm not fit to bet. Of course, right this is what I'm saying. Like, this, these are the things I'm talking about, right? Like logically, there is some sort, there, there's some sort of protection that they're trying to put in place, but it doesn't make any sense. So that was my whole premise, right? It's like the same thing about advertising in Canada. They, the whole thing was like, we don't want to follow the US model and have sports book after sports book just advertising their their sign up bonuses. You can't you can't advertise your sign up bonus if you're in Ontario right now. But every single commercial that runs on TV right now is promoting one feature, which is the same game parlay, which is in my opinion much more harmful than advertising sign up bonuses. Like you're 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 promoting essentially a bet type that has like a 15 to 20 percent hold at some recreational sports books as like a great way to have fun and make things entertaining for the game yeah it is but like we talk about this a lot of time it's fun you know when you when you win money but like when you're constantly losing and we're seeing in ontario now a lot of these sports books have retention problems they go 
you know, they, they can't retain their player base. Why do you think that happens? Because people lose their money so quickly and they say either I'm done with this or they're just going to go find another sports book to play at because they, they think that that sports book's no good for them. So that was kind of like the angles I took. I think they represented me, represented me fairly, but you have the other side of the picture with people from ACGO talking about the rules that they put in place, how there's, you know, certain crackdowns on this and that. And I don't know, I... It's tough. Like, I, I don't want to sound hypocritical. I'm obviously involved in the betting space. I, we, we run the hammer as a betting network where we produce content. We try to do it in the right way, but that's never going to, you know, there's going to be, sadly, people that consume betting content. And as much as I tell them, don't chase this number, only bet it to this number. There's going to be people who will go and bet it past that number. You know, like I'm, I'm conscious of that, right? Same with bet stamp, right? Like we try to do it in the right way. Line shopping. It's just like the easy, easiest, easiest way not to lose a lot of money, but naturally there's going to be people that will only put in one sports book on bet stamp and they won't line shop. They're just going to, you know, dunk away. Like, you know, so it's challenging and I don't want to come across, across as hypocritical, but that's just the nature of the space in terms of line shopping. I talk about it every single week circles off brought to you by pinnacle. I would 100% recommend if you are, Betting at multiple sports books, Pinnacle is one of them. If you're going to choose one, Pinnacle, low margins, great sports book. They're available to bettors in Ontario. They are the world's sharpest sports book. Find out what pro bettors have known for decades. Pinnacle is where the best bettors play. You must be 19 plus in Ontario. Please play responsibly. Not available to those in the U.S. So we haven't done this in a while, but we're going to pull open our bet stamp odd screen. Anyone who's on the YouTube, you can take a look at this right now. You can sign up for free at betstamp.app. But what we're going to show here is why Pinnacle is such an important sports book to have in your kind of, uh, you know, portfolio of sports books. So Pinnacle, actually, they don't offer many bonuses. They don't have sign up deposit matches, things like that. They don't have a rewards program. And what their kind of, uh, you know, their stick is, their benefit is that they have tighter odds than everybody else. When it comes to, when it all comes down to it, typically when you're looking at most games, there will be at least one of money line spread or total where depending on what side you want, Pinnacle will have the best price. If you look here, you know, as of this recording, we're looking at Miami versus Denver right now. And again, these could change by the time you listen to this episode, but we've got the best price on the Denver Nuggets is at Pinnacle. So if you want to bet Denver Nuggets money line, you searched every single book in Ontario, includes the likes of, you know, every commercial you see on TV, Pinnacle's got the best price. Minus 334. On over, right there, spread. Pinnacle, also the best price if you want Denver. So anywhere in Canada, essentially, if you wanted to bet on the spread for Denver or on the money line for Denver, Pinnacle is giving you the best price. And lastly, on the total, over under, Pinnacle's got the best price on the under. So you see one game, which is a basketball game right now, and if you want Denver, Denver spread or under, you can bet Pinnacle. If you want the other side, don't bet it at Pinnacle. But more often than not, what you'll find is that at least one of these will be a, a pinnacle best odds, and it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. As always, you can find this easily without having to search through a bunch of different screens by just using BetStamp. Absolutely. I mean, that, that outlines it right there. And ultimately, sports betting, as I mentioned in CBC, it's much more of a math problem than it is just knowing the teams and understanding it. And when you're constantly betting the best prices, you give yourself a much better chance for success in the long run. That's just a fact, plain and simple. Whether you're already a winner, you win more by getting better prices. If you're a small loser, you actually have a chance to be profitable. If you're just every single time taking a line that's four or five, possibly even 10 cents better. The ranges on some of these books are also pretty wide a lot of the times as well. So pretty valuable there's not much going on in the summer, obviously, but baseball is a perfect example. You see some like pretty wide, wide margins. Even if you're betting props, like props are even wider margins in some of these cases. You'll see arbitrage opportunities all the time in Ontario. So that's out there. Uh, definitely make sure that you're using Pinnacle. So uh, Rob, you did this feature. Yeah. And it seemed like a couple people actually had a beef to pick with the feature. Yeah. So... I, I have to talk about this. Like this could have, this could have, you know, featured in like a tweets that trigger us segment or whatever, but this has been on my mind for a long time right now. And one specific tweet was like the trigger point for me, but 
people ask me a lot, right? Like, why don't you tweet as much anymore? Why do you not spend as much time on Twitter anymore? And frankly, I just don't enjoy the Twitter community like I used to. When I first started betting back in, I don't know, long time ago. When I first got to Twitter, when did I join Twitter? My account says probably like 2010 or something like that. It was very different to the way that Twitter exists nowadays. I joined back in July 2010. Wow. It was much more of a sense of community. There was much more positivity at that time than negativity. And if there's like one tweet that really outlines to me why I cannot stand gambling Twitter anymore, it's this particular one by a lucky a day. So oh, I've honestly seen this guy. I don't, I don't think he's that. I, I don't, I don't hate him. I don't, I don't, t- I don't really hate anyone really. Like, yeah, no, he's tweeted a lot of good things in the past. I will say about this guy. Now, I don't know what, what you're about to say right now. You know, maybe I should have shut up. Go. Okay, well, it, so Plus EV Analytics starts this thread, right? Because he sees the article in CBC and he takes a quote out of it. And this is exactly, you know, he says, Rob Pizzola is dropping knowledge on CBC. Thumbs up. And this is the quote that I gave. Sports betting is more of a math problem than it is knowing sports. If people heard that, maybe it would affect their ability to bet or they would be turned off by it. But that's the truth. It's more of a math problem than actually knowing and understanding sports. And I try to communicate that to people, but they don't want to listen. This was a question that was specifically asked to me. um, And then that was my response. And the response that a lucky a day came with said, it's not quite true though. It depends on the market and how well domain knowledge is priced into that market. I actually kind of somewhat agree with that. My response, which is very snarky because I am an asshole is sure. I'll be sure in every quote I drop going forwards to provide seven asterisks to cover all of the edge cases. And this is precisely what I hate about gambling Twitter, because there's a lot of people that are smart and have different perspectives and that they all win. And like, you can see the rest of this thread here, plus EV jumps in again, Jeff Benson from Circa, your ability to just argue for the sake of arguing is truly impressive, must be exhausting. That's exactly how I feel. I feel like there's so much arguing just for the sake of arguing. And listen, I can, I'll call it a lot of people that I respect. I have no problems with this guy, by the way, a lucky a day. You're right. He He's said, just arguing for the sake of arguing like, okay, sure. But you're not going to be able to put like, that is true for 99.9%. Everyone to me has to be the smartest person in the room at all times. And you can talk like, there's a lot of things that really bug me about gambling Twitter. We've talked about these before, right? Like false expertise. That like is the number one that, that gets me false expertise, lack of accountability, huge. Um, I would, I would honestly say like addiction promotion as well, because there's people that are just out there to make a buck and they don't care at like what expense that it's happening, uh, targeting individuals who are vulnerable. That's part of it as well. Right? Like all those things, misinformation, whatever that, that is all like part of what drives me crazy about gambling Twitter and like the growth of sports betting in North America, right? Most of it, it comes stems from people who are not experts in the field, portraying themselves as experts in the field. But then you have like this tighter, I'll call it sharp gambling Twitter community who really, and this includes myself, by the way, like I'm, I'm fully aware that I am a hypocrite. I do a lot of the same stuff here. It's more about getting better as a group of people, but you actually have this group of people that are smart and sharp and understand it and could really help educate other people on this type of stuff. But instead they get bogged down with arguing with each other nonstop or attacking others nonstop. It just creates like this toxic culture and behavior And listen, everybody's motivations on social media are different, right? Like there are some really sharp, like super sharp bettors out there who are honestly like set for life where it's like they have no incentive to help other people get better at betting or they have nothing to do with their time and they just spend it online arguing with other people. But like 
Look at a guy like Plus EV Analytics. I mean, he's very much guilty of it as well with the way that he you know, goes back and forth with other people. But again, it's just like so pet. It, get, it gets to be so petty after a while. And there's some other examples that I'll go through of stuff that just just bothers me. Like just purely bothers me about the community that it's so lame. It's a, it's like the lamest. Let's hear. So, um, Zach, on this one, just sc- scroll up uh, just, just to the tweet before it. Or Okay, so Jeff Ma. Um, ideas for a bet the process guest this week. Rufus and I are all ears. One guy responds with uh, chicken dinner um, or SP shoot. SP shoot is the Twitter handle for Sam Penyotovic, who we had here on Circles Off before. Sam is a friend of mine. Um, I've made that pretty clear in the episode. I've known Sam for a long time. I can tell you with like 100% certainty that it just happened that the example here is Sam. It doesn't make a difference as to who it is or not, right? Um, Diggs, um, who's very popular in the in the gambling Twitter community, um, responds to that tweet saying, block me from this account too, please. And then he shows two screenshots where he's already blocked by Sam and he's blocked by the chicken dinner account. I don't know why people... See, inferring that that's his burner. Well, no, but I don't know why people wear it as a badge of honor that they're blocked by other people. Like, I'm, I don't... Like, I, I, I look at this stuff and it's like, these people are so proud. Like, they constantly bring it to the attention that they're blocked. Like, you've obviously said something at some point or another that's made this person never want to hear your opinion again on anything. And people treat it like a badge of honor that they're blocked by other people. I'll tell you one of the biggest mistakes I made in life. Getting blocked by Darren Ravel. I don't talk about it a whole lot, but it, it actually like... We got into an argument on Twitter over the actual dumbest thing. And in hindsight, it was like, I could have very easily communicated with him without being a fucking total jackass. You say that's one of the biggest mistakes of your life? Well, because now I have to log out of my account every time I want to see Darren Ravel tweets. (laughs) Bro, come on. But like, I don't, I don't, and, and look to each their own, but this happens every day in gambling Twitter, right? It's like, can't see blocked. Well, you're fucking blocked because you were an asshole. That's why you were blocked. And it happens so often. Like, the way that people treat one another and talk to one another on this platform is unlike anything I've ever seen in life before. Like, honestly, the, peop- the way people treat me, and then I go to Bet Bash, and they're shaking my hand as if they haven't been, like, trolling me on Twitter for two years, like we're best friends is absurd. Like it's, it's nuts. This is the culture of gambling Twitter. Do you know what I mean? Like, how is this anything to be proud about or to like publicize? I like, honestly, like Diggs is obviously very smart. If you follow his account, it's a pure troll account, 100%. Okay. It's mostly just ripping people in the community that make mistakes and stuff. He's obviously very intelligent and has a huge grasp of sports betting. Like it is clear. He is an alpha when it comes to betting on sports. Couldn't be more clear by the way that he trolls other people. But ultimately, like it's a really shitty thing to do. And there's ways that you can go about correcting people without being an asshat is basically what I'm getting at. Does he have any incentive to do so? No, probably not. Will I catch a bunch of grief for this? Sure, I've done this stuff before in my life. Probably three weeks ago, I quote tweeted a guy <laughs> where I was just like, make it stop. I literally said, I did nothing to, to, to message him on the side, do, I, you know, send him an, um, um, anything saying like, here's why you're wrong or here, like reconsider or whatever. I just quote tweeted him pure attention seeking tweet so i'm a guilty culprit as well but it makes the space it makes it like uninhabitable oh here it is literally two weeks ago two weeks ago tell me you so his tweet was 
he did like so, so he quote tweeted someone else. If you can't recognize that a minus 235 is sometimes keyword, very good value, then you shouldn't be giving out betting advice, especially professionally. Click click that guy's quote tweet. Huh? That's it. He just tweeted that. He just tweeted that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so this guy's, this is correct. Yes. I mean, just, a good point. That's, that's true. a good point. Now someone quote tweeted him saying, tell me you don't, Sports, you should say, don't this know sports betting NHL with, without telling me you don't know sports betting. Oh, so he's saying like... He's this trolling this guy. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. So this guy, Johnny Lazarus, is saying that if you think a minus 235 could be a good bet... You're out to lunch. Then like, haha, thanks for exposing yourself that you don't know sports betting. Exactly. So well, the, And thus, what this Johnny Lazarus guy did is thus exposed himself that he doesn't know sports betting. Correct. So you could say he ah, had Ah, the double it entendre. You could say that he had it coming, but I just quote tweeted that and I put make it stop and it got five retweets, 125 likes, 85,800 views. And then Clef TA put, oh, so that's Johnny's burner account as a joke, which I laughed at as well. But regardless... Wait, sorry, go up, scroll up. Dude, but yeah, so yeah, you, you just rose, rose to this guy as well. You That's just what I'm saying. Like, so, so listen, I'm very well aware of it. I get it. And I, I, I get into these states of mind, as I'm sure other people do. Like when you're a better and you win at betting and you're successful... And like, this isn't a pat on the back, but like one of the most frustrating things for you is when other people try to pass themselves off as winners who clearly aren't because the ones that win can easily spot those that don't win. But it does then create like this environment essentially where like nobody can coexist. And it just turns into this every day. Like why, 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 you know, you're cel you're celebrating that someone else blocked you. Like think about that just from a, okay. But does, so, so you think, you think this guy call him Diggs. Uh, that's what everyone yeah. calls him. Uh, I'm, that's obviously not his re regular name, but okay. So you think Diggs wins? Oh, I, 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 I'm certain. Like okay. I, I would say with a hundred, I'm not disagreeing certainty. with you. I'm not yeah. disagreeing with you. I also think, I also think the same, but I'm saying like, do you know how much he wins? Do you know what he bets? You know, things? No, no one even really knows. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I, so the only reason I can know, I, I will say with certainty that I know is because of the, his trolling style is just to retweet, usually. He just retweets stuff that is obviously wrong and like a smart better can see that. There's also but like- he got, he got me once with something from the pod. Yeah, of course. But he's gotten me, he's, he's got me before. I don't, I don't care. You know, like I, I, I'm so used to getting, ro I spent like years getting roasted on Twitter. You know, like I look at this guy who to follow on the right side, the shipper at ship, the justice, that guy probably has roasted me more than any human being in the history of the planet. You know, I don't care. Cause I, I know he's like just a, a fucking shitty trader for sports bet uh, for points bet. And I like, whatever, like, well, why do I care about his opinion? But <laughs> This Pizzola, is, but it's Pizzola. just devolving into like, this is how it devolves, right? The entire situation. It's like, rather than us being able to get along, it's like this dog eat dog, like, but this doesn't happen in real life. You know what I'm saying? Like we all get together for, for at like a conference, bet bash, whatever in Vegas, just like for a golf uh, and like everyone's friends. Like, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. I can't explain the toxicity of, of the, uh, like, and there's more examples. We're not stopping here. All right, go ahead. There's a few more that really got me. Spanky, right? Look, I'll, I'll fuck. It. I'll call up my friends. Sp I talked to Spanky this week. He's, I, I love Spanky. He's a great guy. Go up to go up one more, um, Zach. Okay. One guy. Um, sorry, my my vision is really bad on the. On, I can read this one if you yeah. want. Yeah. So there's a guy here who is tweeting a screenshot uh, from FanDuel Sportsbook that has the Miami Heat that just won the Eastern Conference at plus 950. His bet size was $50. So he won what would have been a profit of around 525. Let's call it 500 bucks. He won 500 bucks, a nickel, yep. as Spanky would say. Nickel. Um, yeah, no, no real better would ever say 500 bucks. Would be <laughs> Sorry. I I, we'll, 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 we'll see. That was, that was a good joke. Um, so this guy recaps his tweet and he says, Haywood Highsmith in the clutch, 
check mark. Gabe Vincent Leap, check. Caleb Martin Evolution, check. Bam Adebayo's Next Step, check. Jimmy Butler's Revenge, check. Eric Spolstra, still king, check. Never hedged, didn't need to, turn that green. So basically, just celebrating his bet. Victory lapping. That it won. Happens every day. You know, this is is Twitter. So Spanky's response. I know you put this on here. I did see this one, but what did you want to say about this one? Okay, so like, here's the response for those listening, uh, for those watching, you see it on screen. Flexing that you didn't hedge a $50 nine to one bet coupled with six check marks, a crown and a money face emoji is as out of touch with reality as it gets. Congrats on your $450 win. Don't spend it all in one place. Okay, so now we're now we're at the point of like mocking bet sizes essentially as well, right? Like we get it for four, you know, for Spanky that's nothing. Four hundred fifty dollar win. I, for, he won. Yeah, he won. Like go up the screen, or you can't really see it here. We're on. Uh, what did he? What did he actually place a wager on? So you would have won four seventy five if it's plus nine fifty. Yeah, four seventy five profit. So yeah. go ahead. Either way, like the yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. money. Like now we're now we're stomping on somebody for like the amount that they bet on a game, which is like, I've been there before. No, nah, honestly, he's tripping him because he he's flexed that he didn't hedge the bet. That that too, but like you can you know, I like this one. I'm not gonna lie. There's a way to get this message across. And by the way, again, for the millionth time, I'll reiterate this. I'm very guilty of doing the same thing. Okay, this is like a an introspective. Like, you know, sometimes you do something for so long and then you see someone else do it, doing the same thing. And you're like, holy shit, is that how I look when I'm tweeting this stuff? Because I'll roast somebody and I'll get like a couple hundred likes, right? And like the, my following loves that. But like to everyone outside of that, I look like a complete and utter jackass. And frankly... This, I don't. I don't want to make this like episode like the most like the deepest like or whatever, but there's room for just being good people sometimes, and we have no idea what that guy's intention was with his original tweet. I can totally see why Spanky would have read that and like immediately blown a gasket and felt the need to respond to this. But sometimes we can just let stuff go or respond in a way of like, that's a little bit more human. How is Diggs in this tweet thread again? He probably retweeted it, man. I Scroll like, up? Is that he, what it he is? He literally probably retweeted it. It is. He replied to Diggs' retweet, I guess, because he's he's in it. Don't I mean, some there's Playmaker Dave. Don't unit shame Spanx. I agree with that, but Playmaker he's not, Dave... He's not chirping him for a unit shame. Unit shame is if you say, ha ha, you only bet 50 bucks. Why didn't you bet that for 50 grand? He's, I think... Spanky is saying, why are you flexing that you didn't hedge? Because that guy saying that he didn't hedge is hilarious. He's saying, didn't hedge, didn't need to. Basically saying, like, I didn't hedge for Ouija, bro. But he could have made that exact same point without the final two sentences. So it's a combo. Fair. Like, he's definitely, he, he, he could have just put that first paragraph there and got the same point across. The congrats on your $450 win, don't spend it in all in one place as a unit shaming. Fine. All right. What about what else we got? Um, okay. So this one in particular caught me. Bomani Jones. I used to work with Bomani Jones. So again, this is like a little bit more personal. Um, but he tweeted, "This was the Heat. The Heat were up three nothing in the series at this point against the Boston Celtics, and he tweeted, the Heat are still only a one point favorite. Vegas's models just cannot conceptualize what the Celtics have done this series." Gambling Twitter got a hold of this. Now, the, obviously, this tweet has a lot wrong with it and a, a lack of understanding of how the market works. This tweet was at 5.35 p.m. Eastern time on the night of a game. Limits for that game were extremely high. So we know, like me and you know, betting market determined this was the right price, like how the market works, right? Right. So wow. when I was in my early 20s working at The Score, Hardcore Sports Radio to be more specific, Bomani Jones got hired at that time and he did a, a weekly morning show called The Basketball Jones. And uh, he did this out of his home in North Carolina. He would come to The Score offices maybe two or three times a year. I can only speak 
very highly of him in terms of who he is as a person, the personal interactions with I have with that I had with him, the way that he tweeted uh, or treated people, I should say. The way that he tweeted people. The, the way that he tweeted. The way that he treated people. Um, I have ut- the utmost respect for him. Now, listen, controversial person. A lot of people will disagree with me. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, right? And I think personal situations like influence how you see a person and view them. Um, so this particular one right here, if this was not Bomani Jones that tweeted this, I probably would have went in hard just like other people did. What I did do at this exact moment, I was cooking a HelloFresh recipe. I stopped, Negative EV. I stopped. For me, it's positive EV. We can get into the discussion at another <laughs> point. For me, it's positive EV. But I, I sent this tweet to Bomani through a DM. And I said, if I respond to this tweet publicly, it's going to cause a stir and it's going to look like I'm attacking you. This isn't really the way it works. Betters dictate the market price, not really Vegas. Your point may still be valid, but this is a very large market where the biggest sports books are currently taking 100K plus bets, which has determined the price. Now, I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to post the entire private conversation because it's private, but his response was, this is very interesting. I didn't know that. Tell me more. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing. Where can I find more about this topic? Um, I explained a little bit more to him and I sent him the circles off episode that we did with Chris Bennett, who's the risk management, head of risk management for Circa, has been promoted recently, took Matt Metcalf's spot um, recently as well. Link in the description of the YouTube. For sure. You can watch that video. But I said, honestly, if you got an hour, watch this. It will change it. Told me he appreciated it. He watched it. He sent me back messages about it. I didn't understand this. That's constructive, in my opinion. And again, it's not to pat myself on the back, but like he doesn't know. And he thinks he knows. And for betters, like you can be like, no, it's a fraud, this and that or whatever. But like, there's ways to go about things there that doesn't have to be just pure toxic culture. And, I like that. And candidly, I would say, and I'm very, I'm, I'm very self-aware. Like I said, if this wasn't, bo- if this was somebody that I didn't like, if this was spread, would have if this was a spread blade. investor, I obviously would have immediately quote tweeted this and be like, look at this idiot and whatever. And I, I have to be better about that. But like people in general just have to be better because we've created like this environment where there are actually a lot of people who can provide a lot in the form of education that people just don't want to listen to because they come off as so abrasive. Think back to the podcast episode we did with Jeff Benson and JJ. JJ. Think back to that. And what JJ endure, endured for two weeks leading up to that. And why we had why we eventually did the podcast, right? Uh, now, I guess it's just a to- a more of a toxic uh, marketplace in this industry. It is. But is it not like that for every industry? I brought some multiple times. It's the same shit. I, I, I don't know, and I can't say specifically, but like I've been involved in other sector sectors of Twitter over over time. Like crypto Twitter, yeah, you still have like, you know, a lot of ignorant people. You have a lot of the exact same, like what, what was that list I gave before, right? Like you have targeting vulnerable individuals, false expertise, lack of accountability, like that exists in all the other spaces as well, as does the toxic behavior, but that doesn't make it right. And like, it's ni- it's, it's fun and nice to like just dunk on people nonstop, but it creates just like this culture of like everybody hating one another for like no reason. It's, it's the dumbest. It's actually like, it's actually so dumb. We all share like a common interest. So many of us win together. We all know that the other people are winning betters, but it's just like correcting people here, correcting people there. You're an idiot. You're in this, you know, Pisky tweets something from the Banfield group of account. That's like a basically straight out of a fortune cookie, which is just like advice on betting, which would probably really resonate with 99% of people that don't know betting. But then he's just like destroyed, dragged through. The, you know, you know what I'm getting at? Spanky dragged the bet stamp account. He yeah, did. bet stamp Eric. Bet stamp Eric, who we got to have on the pod one day, by the way. We should yeah. really do an episode yeah. with him. He's going to listen to this for sure. When you listen to this, shoot a message, Rob, Zach, and I, and we'll set it up. But I mean, listen, 
I, I, at one point, well, you're, okay, just message him now then. Sure. At one point, yeah. Why, why does he have to shoot us? A because I just want to check if he's listening. If he's listening, he listens every. He week. messages me every single. He's week. probably the first listener every so, week. Okay, so let's see from time of release to when he list to when he messages you, and let's place and take a wager right now. Okay. So when is this going to come out? What time? This is coming out on Thursday, the. 8th of uh, June. Yeah, what time? At 4, 4 p.m. PM Eastern. 4 p.m. Eastern. So assuming we get it live at 4 p.m. Eastern. This part of the podcast will be approximately 38 minutes. Okay. So then we'll set this at, what do we want What do we want to set? He might listen to this on like expedited speed. It's true. But he's not going to listen right at 4. 440, is he? 4.45 is a good over. No, that's to see if he lists it right when it comes out. That's a, that's that's going to be crazy. Well, Listen, I, I last two week, hours, not last two week hours. with Kevin Davis, I implored people to turn their notifications on, which by the way, if you haven't yet, if you, if you so money said it with me on edge work last week when we recorded, cause he listened to that episode as well. Instead of, he wants you to smash the mouse so hard that it not only breaks the mouse, but also breaks your desk. He wants it to be such a hard smash out, on please. that notification. Oh, can you show the new hammer to the? This is the one we brought in last week, which is a big fan of. We're building a little uh, hammer wall here. So this is, it's not quite the welding and chipper hammer, but this thing can do some serious damage. This one will mess you up because it's actually so light. That thing is like, you can get a lot of hits in before someone else can so get one. So to see the hammer. Okay, I'll take over. over if YouTube you guys are doing 45. You'll take over on 445? Guaranteed. No, okay, here's the thing. I will not influence this. So no one can message him. We leave it in this room right now. This is all live on the air. He's going to be currently listening to this as well. He's going to be listening to this. So it's technically though, you, okay, Eric, to be fair, you have to message as soon as you get it. As soon as you, yeah, as soon soon as you, you hear, hear this, this, you have to message. All right. I would easily take over 445. That's ridiculous. I think he, I think he literally will listen at four o'clock right on the nose. Okay. Let's place a quick He's the type trip. of guy. I'll give you plus 150 for 445 under. Okay. Uh, I, no, sorry. I, I'm getting plus 150 on the under. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Done deal. Yeah. What do you want to? What, what, we, we'll for, add it to the sheet. We'll I'll, figure out. For, the sheet. It'll be for a lunch. There's a some. Drink. There's some funds that you still owe me, by the way. Yeah. No. I know. I know. I know. I do. And also, some good news is, I found the little ball for the roulette wheel. Oh, so we're baby. back in action for today. You think you want more spins? Oh, buddy, I'm gonna win all that cash back. It's just, that's. Uh, yeah. I don't think that's the way it, it typically works. But, um, yeah. I. So we, we've got we've we're off the ball. rails big time there, there there was actually in hindsight no point to this episode other than i had to share express these feelings so <laughs> I, I i i the if i can suggest one thing even for like there's gonna be a lot of people i'm gonna get roasted for this whichever i don't care there's gonna be a segment of the population that doesn't like me that will just be like oh what's rob doing and this and like trying to connect all these betters it's like we all share common goals. Obviously, it's a competitive environment. We're competing against one another on a lot of stuff as well. But like, it's time to tone it back a bit, I think. Like, it's gotten to the point where it's actually, like, I can't even, maybe this is like my own personal interest at heart. Like, I can't even go on Twitter anymore without just seeing something every single day. Like, every single day. So why don't we issue a quick challenge? So what Rob did here with uh, Bomani Jones, basically saying, if you see something that someone tweeted, that's wrong. Instead of bashing him on Twitter, shoot him a DM, see what they say, see if you can teach him. If they double down, bash him. You, you, <laughs> honestly, if they double down, you, you listen. You can only do so much to try to help someone. I'm joking around. I'm joking around. But, Think, think about it at the think about it from the bet stamp office perspective, right? Zach got hired the same time as uh, uh, very similar to the time of Jacob, who appeared in studio for one of our episodes, Josh, who appeared in studio for one of our episodes, Luke, who appeared in studio for one of our episodes, lay it with Luke. And like, I'm not here to bash or whatever, but Zach was betting in a certain way where we start to help him along. And he started to take notice and he started to do things. And now he has evolved into a, a legitimate winning better. And now he originates lacrosse. And then, uh, <laughs> he's he actually is, one of the he best. And he's, the, he's, he's got picked up by, he's actually got picked up by Rufus's group now. <laughs> and he's originating lacrosse all from this podcast. 
Yeah. That, but as soon as he starts posting his lacrosse picks on Twitter, someone's going to go and just shit on him and be like, oh, buddy, you're ruining the market forever. Like, you're doing this, you're doing that. Like, just like the negative culture is going to come in. But to the larger point, Luke never listened to a word we said. Like, he just kind of just doubled down on that path. And it just gets to a point where you're like, okay, like, I'm, I'm done helping. Like, I've said what I, I've done what I can do for Luke. Yeah, but you guys are hitting 75%. That's shooting 75 percent. i think that's sure good. but josh but, is a questionable josh well josh is you know he's he's he got there like slowly over time i don't know i haven't i haven't che- i haven't taken a look at his bet stamp in a bit he he was let's say he was using that beta tool we had for a little bit for his own helping it helping, helping his own yeah bets. he knew he kind of knew what was going on but the same thing's gonna happen out there you know like i think back to the argument i had with darren Ravel. It was all about the probability of two ties happening in an NFL season where I, I, I explained the math to him. I said, you know, this is wrong. What you posted is not correct. This would, this would mean that the probability of a tie happening in one game is this, which is obviously not right. He doubled down on, well, I asked a sports book director in Vegas, and this, this is where I got the number from. I said, okay, I get that. You asked them, I'm, you know, giving you the probabilities and whatever. And then he doubled down again. And then I called him an idiot. And that was it. And I could have done without the end and just moved on because there's really no need for that is a reality. You, you, you can do what you can to try to legitimately help people, let them get them to learn. And then you can't, then you just get to a point where you're like, okay, this person doesn't want to, that's fine. But it doesn't need to be like, the toxicity doesn't have to be through the roof. Yeah, I agree. If um, quick plug, if you guys are looking for sports books, we say it every week now. It's uh, www.betstamp.app slash circles off. No matter what region you're in, no matter where you are, you can find the best sports books, best odds, promotions, everything like that. Check out the link in the description. Sign up. Really QR helps code the show. On the screen right now. QR too. code on the screen wow, right look now. Look at this. Look at the tech we got in house now. We were watching on like a 14 inch monitor and we got QR codes. There you go. So, uh, it, everyone, it does help support the show, keeps it free, keeps us obviously producing, motivated, continue to produce amazing content. We've got a couple really good ideas coming for future shows um, and some banger guests coming in the future as well. So, we are fired up about Circles Off. Channel is bumping it's at an all-time high and once again it's a plea with you out there i know a lot of you did this last week but some of you might have listened and you know you were driving in the car or forgot about it but reach out to somebody who hasn't consumed circles off yet in any capacity give them your favorite episode say you got to watch this try to turn them into a, a listener and a follower obviously we love to do this we really do you know, we spend a lot of time over the course of the week thinking of ideas, what would make the show interesting, how to help people out. But obviously our ask of you is to help us grow as best as possible. There's nothing more infuriating to me than going and seeing YouTube channels and sports betting that have like 100K subscribers with candidly people that are misleading and presenting false information, false expertise to the public. So help us grow, help people find us and do that by leveraging your own personal networks if possible. Two other things. Number one, let us know in the comments, on Twitter, DMs, anywhere, if uh, we, we're considering getting some Circles Off merch. Hoodies, ca- caps, shirts, we might, we might get a cool design. If anyone's interested, let us know. And then secondary, which is, again, a big one, let us know for future guests. We are always taking feedback for the show, right? So sometimes Rob and I will have on pro bettors who might be a little bit more known. Sometimes I'm on sportsbook directors, things like that. What we've been getting a lot of requests for recently is like people who might not be as known, smaller bettors, people who are just starting, underground guys who maybe have to go under aliases. Let us know what you want. If you have a good guest suggestion, send it in. Or if you want to just suggest what types of uh, interview styles are your favorite or what other topics you want Rob and I to cover. Really appreciate it um, if you can. Last thing, we didn't do it at the beginning. Episode 105. Wow. Glad you reminded me because people would have got... There are good fives in sports, by the way. So there's actually like one good number five per sport, which is crazy. No, there's more than that. No, but I'm saying like there's like one big one in each sport. Yeah. By the way, like... We could probably like branch out into some other stuff as like people every now and then post or like sent me a Twitter DMs or like, oh, you forgot about this guy who wore like number five and whatever. We cover the major sports like, you know, 
I don't know, like cricket. whoever's in the Indy car number five, like I'm not going to mention him on every. I only know one, one NASCAR guy, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson was a was a banger. So Kevin you, Harvick was uh, was a big guy for me. He won me a lot of money in DFS. Number five, we have NHL defenseman Norris Trophy multi-time winner Nick Lidstrom. Nicholas Lidstrom in the Stanley Cup right now. We have Aaron Ekblad, number five on oh, the Panthers. Former former first overall and uh, C. OHL exceptional status. One of only three players. How do you get OHL exceptional status? You apply. You apply, and if you're younger, they give you an extra year. It's like him, McDavid, and uh, Rob Shrimp. They should do that with Twitter. Elon should do that with Twitter. Exceptional <laughs> status? No, 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 no. There's more now. No, I'm pretty sure Tavares was one as well. Exceptional status? Yeah. I'm, I, no, I don't think he was. I gave bad trivia on the show last week. I got roasted for it. What trivia? Uh, Pat Quinn did not end Sean Bobby Orr's career. Sean Day Come on. Pat, yeah, he did. Pat Quinn, like, he destroyed Bobby Orr on a hit. But yeah. what didn't end his career? It didn't, he, came, he came back a couple years later and played. Joey D. Maggio. There you go, dude. John Tavares, Aaron Ekblad, Aaron Ekblad, Nick Ekblad, David, Sean Day, well, Shane Wright. These are just recent. Joe Volano? Wow. Key, wow, and look where he is now. Just more and Bedard more false in information WHL. right here on Circles And off. look where Joe Volano is now. Got that. Got suspended for stomping on a guy's leg in the world yeah. Uh, yeah. championships. Yeah, that was. Uh, you said Joe DiMaggio? Jolton Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Boys, you want to get KG. Wow, Albert, yeah. Albert Pujols was uh, five. Also, you know who is like a very, un- I'll call him underrated. Like when I say him, people will be like, oh, but like people don't really remember him. But we're like when you're talking about the best players in the late 90s, early 2000s, Jeff Bagwell. Jeff Bagwell. Number five. Jeff Bagwell, very underrated ball player. I would say. I got two Formula One drivers who uh, donned the number five. They're actually legendary. Okay. Michael Schumacher. Yeah, my, my, my boy. I, uh, honestly, I don't think I ever cried so hard watching a documentary as I did Schumacher. And, Poor guy, uh, man. This one says Sebastian Vettel. Yeah, Vettel did. In honor of Schumacher. Yeah. Because he was his idol growing up. Yeah. There you go. Donovan McNabb blowing chunks in the huddle, wearing number five in the Super Bowl. Joe Flacco. Who built a career off of defensive pass interference? It's <laughs> lots of good number fives. I got to think. Who's the number five that's retired to the Maple Leafs? I was trying to think of who wore number five on the Leafs. I was thinking well, uh, Jason Blake, uh, but he wore fifty-five. 55. I actually have a. Uh, you guys. Oh, so, do- so the Leafs have a retired number five. I'm just trying to think who it is because if it's so- no, we missed him last week. Five is Bill Barocco. Bill Barocco. No, we missed half day. Okay, we got to tell the story now. If people don't know about Bill Bar- Bill Barocco, is um, the reason that the Leafs haven't won the uh, cup since '67. Tragically, Hip did a song about Bill Barocco. Yep. Disappeared. So, so half day. If you guys want to know the biggest legend, one of the biggest legends in sports history. If you do you know do you know half day? Half day. You know half day, Zach. Yeah. Number four for the Leafs, an absolute Leafs legend. Born in 1901 in Owen Sound, Ontario. Okay, ready for this guy's story? <laughs> story played in the OHA. Johnny played in the OHA yep. as a teenager. Joined the University of Toronto. Yep. Okay. Played as a left winger. In 1927, the St. Pats were purchased by Con Smythe. Yep. And they were renamed to the Toronto Maple Leafs. So he was the inaugural Toronto Maple Leafs player. Okay. Hap Day, the first ever captain in Leafs history, became, okay, whatever, keep going. So he plays, whatever. He's he, Him and uh, King Clancy are the top defensive pairing in the NHL. They win a bunch of Stanley Cups. All good. Works great. Okay, ready for what happens next? He takes a hiatus from playing for two years and becomes... The head official in the NHL. He's the head referee. Wow. In the NHL. Took a sabbatical and he just he joined the, the ref. He was ref top union. defenseman. He would have won the Norris if James Norris had probably even been playing at that time, which he wasn't. Then, then gets even better. Guy for the next couple years goes on to work as the head coach of the Leafs. Returns to the Leafs as coach. Okay. You know what this guy sounds like? Sorry to interrupt you, but he's like the guy that was playing and blamed everybody else, right? <laughs> he's like, God, God damn it, these ref- I'll show these guys how to ref a game. And then like, oh, these coaches, they don't know what they're doing. I'll show these guys how to coach a game. 
That's okay, what the so type he of guy goes, he, he takes like. a hiatus from his NH, his 11 year tenure as captain to work as a referee for two years before then joining the Leafs as head coach and leading the team to five cups in 10 seasons. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Winning his head coach in history until someone passed him now, but he's, well, he's second. And then after that, in 1950, Con Smythe promoted Hab Data assistant general manager. Gets his seventh cup as the assistant GM. And then he goes president of hockey operations and general manager. What an absolute legend. The guy straight up was every position. Couldn't he, he worked his way up. He did every position, including an official in the league. Clarence Henry Day. Is that his name? Later known as Hap Day. I like Hap Day. You can make you know what you know what's all like I think about this a lot. I'm obviously not playing pro sports in my mid thirties or never was close to playing pro sports. But Hap Day, you can make a pretty banger signature out of. Rob Robert Pizzola, it's hard to make a I guess with the with the Zs or the Zs. You can do something cool with those, but it doesn't work. When Wait, I was playing guys, even lacrosse, more, I didn't even know this. He was I a successful business owner after. Mm. Do you think you have a good signature or no? Like a good... Uh, um, so it's okay. Not the best, not the worst. Yeah, we're not going to put our signatures out in public because I don't want somebody to steal my identity. But, but it would be good. nice to have a vote on the signature. All right, I'm glad I was able to spread some knowledge and at least share the story of... This is day. all real too, by the way. Not like last week. With Rob's false information. With my false information, no. which I've been told my whole life by everybody. You are fake news. No, Hap Day was an absolute Maple Leafs legend. Um, he passed away probably like 30, 40 years ago. But 1990, he passed away at the age of 89. So there you go. Hap Day, Leafs legend. We missed him last week. Sorry about that, Hap, but I'm um, glad we can get to, get the shout out in. I, I, I had it in when we were back then. I'm like, oh, when Hap Day comes, I got to tell this story on the, for number four. You missed we it. Forgot. I, I thought he was honestly number six. Screw the pooch part. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Pete will be after us. All right. Uh, I think we're done here. I think we're we'll done. We'll see everybody next week. We'll be back. Subscribe, like, everything. See ya.